Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by Car Loop, Australian EV data and ownership trends, Cobra Car Insurance, Paper Kilometer, Warbox, EV charging solutions, and EV, hire electric vehicles from real owners. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today on Ludicrous Feed. Uh, behind me you can see my BYD seal, which I have had for one week as of yesterday. And as promised today, I will be doing my one week update of the car. So as a full disclaimer, to start with, uh, you know, my alias for the last, uh, what is it, six years I've had this channel has been Tesla Tom. Uh, that's because I have purchased four Tesla vehicles over that time. I currently still own two of those cars, uh, one of them here being the Tesla Model Y and also my Tesla Model S uh, as well. So uh, I still have more Tesla vehicles than the uh, BYD Seal. So yeah, no bias at all to uh, the BYD Seal. Uh, really to all the Tesla cars for that matter. The mission of this channel has always been about encouraging people to get into an EV uh, for their personal or family vehicle. And all I'm doing on this channel is just documenting my experience. Uh, I'm not a BYD shareholder uh, across any market. Uh, in fact, I'm a Tesla shareholder, I've got a handful of Tesla shares, uh, and I don't receive any commission from BYD to make this video or payment for that matter. I'm just doing this to document my experience, uh, my own personal experience. So. Uh, whether you buy this car or not is your own concern and make sure you get professional financial advice before making any purchase from any content that you see on my channel. Okay, let's go through uh, everything from top to tail over the last eight days of ownership of this vehicle. Let's start with the delivery process. So I was actually overseas in Japan on family holiday when I first got notification uh, that my delivery was pending for this vehicle. Uh, the team were fantastic. They were communicating with me through email and texts. Uh, shout out to Alex, my rep, who helped me out with the process. Uh, he was very kind to delay delivery by, I think it was 10 days um, from the time I got the notification in Japan. He sent all the documentation to me by email, which I filled out uh, online, signed online, transferred the money online as well. I paid for this vehicle uh, with cash. I was fortunate enough to do that. No finance or encumbrance pending. Now on delivery day itself, I took the train to Mascot Station uh, in Sydney, which is about, I think a 45 minute ride on first the Northern Line and then the uh, airport line. It wasn't too hard in the end. Getting off a of Mascot Station was about a 10 minute walk uh, through some nice shops. Uh, and pretty safe streets. Got to the new BYD delivery and service center. On the train ride, I got a text from Alex saying that it was a delay with the registration of the car. So that's fine, I sat around for a bit um, and also went for a coffee as well. And the BYD team over there looked after me. Um, now, Alex gave me the bad news that on the day, there was a problem with registration. Apparently, the RMS had a cybersecurity issue. So no vehicle apparently was able to be registered that day. So I, I had to come back the next day to take delivery. But in the meantime, he ran through the car top to tail uh, and uh, got very familiar with the vehicle in the next half an hour that I was there with him. They were kind enough to lend me a Nato 3 for the night, which I drove back home, came back the next day um, and the car was ready for me, no problems. And they even threw in some floor mats as well, uh, complimentary. I was actually gonna buy them anyway, but um, thank you to the team for uh, doing that for me. I think they're about $200 uh, if you buy them uh, as an accessory. And the windows of the car seem to be tinted as well. Let me show you what I mean. So here's the Tesla Model Y on the right and the BYDC on the left. You can clearly see that the windows are tinted. See that? Even the front windows are more tinted than the Model Y, which is definitely not tinted. The rear windows came tinted with the Model Y um, and the back windows for the seal are definitely more tinted. So I didn't ask for this. Um, I think it's actually an extra cost, but I'm thankful they came tinted. So thanks BYD. Oh, and here are the floor mats that came comp with the car. Okay, back to the delivery process of the car. Before I drove off, I also made sure I had comprehensive car insurance purchased through NRMA. Uh, and the pricing was actually quite comparable to uh, other vehicles I've owned, including the Tesla Model Y here next to me. Okay, so let's talk about the exterior of the car to start with. Um, looks fantastic, I've got to say. BYD have done a great job with the styling um, all throughout the vehicle. Uh, it looks very aerodynamic. I love the diffusers out the back, which I'll show you when I do a little walk around with the vehicle. And the paint looks pretty good as well, nice and thick um, and very shiny uh, under the light with the uh, pearly white. Um, and I've actually bought a uh, paint thickness pen, which I'll have to use later on because it hasn't arrived yet in time for this video. So I might as well run through the key fobs you get with the car. So you get two of these key fobs um, and you also get uh, a key card, NFC key card as well, which I've not actually used once. I've just been relying on the key fob. Uh, very straightforward, of course, you've got the lock unlock, um, double tap for the boot, and then you've got this 
button, which is actually quite useful. And then say you're 20 meters away from your car, you can actually see it. You just use uh, this button here. I'll make sure the car is locked to start with. So it's already locked. Um, in fact, if it's locked and you do that, it will beep once and will flash the light so you can look for the car in the car park. But let's say you're walking towards the car. Um, it's a hot day. You want to turn the air conditioning on quickly without having to go through the app, which you can, of course, use as well, which I've gone through in a previous video to precondition the vehicle. But let's say you want to do it quickly or you forgot to do it through the app. You just hold on to this button here and the vehicle will turn on and the air conditioning will turn on as well, which is handy. So watch this. So that was about two seconds, right? Uh, and now the car is turning on behind me. And after a while, you'll hear the uh, air conditioning start to turn on and then the car will be ready for you to go. So that's the aircon running now. Now, the one thing I will say about the car is that it's got a very low ground clearance, which is actually lower than the Tesla Model 3. Now, I think most of the low ground clearance is actually due to a plastic bumper or a piece just under the front of the car, which I'll show you later. Um, and that's to make the car more aerodynamic, I think. But I find that with my sloping driveway, even with my rubber speed bumps, it's still catching the bottom of the car. And most of the damage, well, wear is coming from that plastic bumper. I'm not too concerned because it's like, it seems like a plastic addition, uh, but importantly, the undercarriage or the hull of the vehicle uh, is not uh, getting damaged from the scrapes. And it certainly has not bottomed out uh, anywhere I've driven yet in the last eight days I've had this vehicle. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is storage. So you've seen my quick staycation in Sydney with the BYD. Um, the boot, I think, technically is smaller in size again to the Model 3, uh, which I'll do a comparison of when I have the Model 3 loan again next week. Um, but it's adequate enough, I think, to store a few suitcases, definitely adequate enough for your weekly shopping uh, and to carry a few you know, items for your kids uh, on your day-to-day -day drive. I'll have more experience of that uh, as the school term begins. The uh, front of the car has a little uh, storage area, which I'll also show you very shortly. Um, and that's enough for me to carry my charging cables in there. So I'll just show you some of the nice details of the VYD seal. So you've got these uh, door handles, which protrude when you come to open it, and then it'll retract uh, flush with the car when you drive off to make it more aerodynamic. Same with the back of the car as well. A few more extra details of the car. This is the C pillar. A few more details here on the bottom of the car. There is actually a lot more piano black um, around the car. so. I'll be interested to see uh, how scratched the car gets over time. Another nice bit of detail there uh, on the side of the car. And both front and rear tyres are the same and they're equipped uh, with uh, Continental tyres, 235 R19s. And I think they're EV specific, so this is Eco Contact. A few more nice details again at the front of the car. Got sensors all over the vehicle. A bit more piano black down here across the uh, air intake down the bottom. Now this is what I'm talking about, this extra plastic bumper underneath the front bumper. And that's what's causing the problem with the lower ground clearance. Now I've got my trusty tape measure and it's pretty much 12 centimeters from the floor to that plastic piece. And in fact, if you count it from the actual bumper itself, it's more like 15 centimeters. So someone suggested that you can actually take that off if you have a problem with uh, ground clearance and a sloping driveway at home. So I'll see how I go over time. I might possibly take it off if uh, I get sick of that scraping noise down the bottom. Okay, so down here uh, near the pedals, there's actually a latch for the front bonnet. You gotta pull it twice to open it. Don't know why it's twice. Maybe it's a security thing. And what I like about the bonnet is that it's uh, not like the old school latches where you gotta find something under here to pull it up. You literally just pull it up. And there it is. Um, there's a port here for the washer fluid. And then the actual front itself is just here. And what I carry in here is a Type 2 cable uh, for any public chargers that don't have a tether. And then just an extra Type 1 to Type 2 adapter, which I rarely use these days. There's not many Type 1 chargers anymore. Okay, so a few more details which I'm loving about the car is the rear diffuser. Makes it look really sporty and aggressive, which I love. Um, and um, a few more sensors too at the back. There you go. And some more details here on the side. Something I don't like is the badging, so that's okay. I don't mind the rear BYD. And then over here you've got BYD again and BYD seal. So I haven't quite worked out what the best position is for the extra badging, but um, I'll have a think about that. Uh, there's a little rear camera there. Push that button. The boot opens up. Now, it comes with sunshades, which I've used before. It's um, actually very easy to open out. I'll show you later on. And then down here there's an extra floor space. Seems shallow, but there's actually another extra floor space below this for your tire compressor kit, which you can take out to deepen that cavity. 
And then you can lock the car with this button or just close it once. Like that. And on the right side of the vehicle is a charge port, push open, CCS2 with cover flaps. Now, unfortunately the charge port is on the right hand side of the car, so that makes it not optimal for Tesla version two, version three superchargers. Uh, the cables aren't long enough for those superchargers to drag across around the other side. So you either have to take up an extra spot, which is annoying for other drivers, or you can find an edge stall. That way you can park on a non-charging spot and then use the adjacent uh, charger. I will head out to a Tesla supercharger to try out um, to see whether the B3 chargers work with the seal. And now this is all the piano black I was talking about before, so we'll see whether uh, they stay pristine or they're prone to scratching as I continue my ownership over time. It's, yeah, pretty much everywhere. All throughout, even lines the mirrors and all the detail. Okay, so let's briefly talk about the interior of the car before I give you a little walk around. Um, it's actually a very comfortable ride. Um, and just the seats are fantastic. They are real leather. Uh, whether that's a good thing or not, it's up to you. The steering wheel is also real leather as well. Um, so I don't know. There's something about real leather, unfortunately. It's just, I haven't been able to find any material that replicates that just yet. It's just a very plush, comfortable ride, uh, and the seats are ventilated and heated as well, so handy for both seasons. Um, and yeah, the glass roof might be problematic for some people, but apparently it has been treated with silver. Better heat resistant, um, hasn't been hot enough yet in Sydney over the last week I've had this car. I've had the shades up once, which definitely make the uh, cabin more comfortable, more cozy, more cocooned. So that might be something you might want to use in the heat of summer. Certainly it'll be a very pleasant ride in winter with less sun. Haven't felt the heat come through the glass yet in the last week. Okay, so let me show you a few more details inside the car. Um, not as much piano black, luckily, inside the vehicle. This stuff um, is a bit more matte, so that shouldn't scratch. I uh, love the de detail and trim along the vehicle there. The blue stitching looks good. Um, and there's uh, interior lighting too, to make it a bit um, different. You can change the settings of the colors and things. Now these are the leather seats I was talking about. They certainly are very comfortable. Um, and th think they'll be very hard wearing. Um, perforation for uh, ventilation. And I don't actually mind the BYD stitching up here. I know some people don't like that, but personally I think that's okay. I found an extra little uh, cubby here. Keep a few things in there. I'm loving all the storage down here. Keep all the sunglasses and uh, other bits and pieces in there. Wireless charging down here is very handy. You can turn it off if you uh, need to plug your phone in, such as usage for Apple CarPlay. Now I finally worked out what this button does. So uh, you can actually deepen this driver's side um, drink holder like that. For example, if you want to hold a larger drink like a tall latte or milkshake or even bubble tea, but if you want to bring up the height of this uh, holder again, just push that button and that springs back up to its original position. Okay, so that is the glass roof there. And again, I have been told that it has been silver treated, hence uh, better heat resistance. So the sunshades come folded like that, like a butterfly. And then to open it out, um, I'll try and do it with one hand, but I may need to put it down. No, I'll just use two hands. So that's what it looks like when it uh, springs open. Uh, it's, it does take a bit of practice to fold it back again, so it's not something you could probably easily do on the fly. You either have it on or off most of the time. And then on the edge of the uh, shades, you've got these plastic um, tabs, which actually um, go into this bit here between the trim and the glass. So, yeah, um, when you spring the shade open, just be careful because you, know, it, you don't want that, those clips to damage anything in the car, or scratch for that matter. Okay, so this is the difference between the sunshades on and um, sunshades off at the back of the car. So there is a noticeable difference. It does make the cabin a lot darker, obviously when you're in the dark, um, and it's barely letting enough uh, of the you know artificial light through. This camera's actually got very good low lighting capabilities, but I'm telling you with my own eyes, it's um, barely enough light coming through. So I think it probably does a good enough job to uh, protect the light and heat entering into the cabin. But of course, I wait for a very hot day to do a uh, proper temperature test, so stay tuned. Okay, so uh, just to finish off the video, so um, infotainment screen I've gone through uh, in a previous video. Um, the software's not too bad. I, as an Apple user, will have to get used to the Android ecosystem, slowly getting the hang of it. There's some bits where 
I feel like it could be a bit more intuitive. Um, some of the buttons and settings could be saved with maybe one button. For example, there's two buttons, one for interior lighting on, interior lighting off, small things like that, which hopefully will be improved with software updates. Uh, you get two gigabytes of data per month, 500 megabytes in the first month. Uh, and this is all included with the car. There's no extra cost for the first two years at least. I haven't heard any details about the um, costs ongoing from there. So uh, I'll keep you guys informed when I have more information. Uh, I've done a rundown of the app as well. Fairly basic, but it does pretty much everything you need uh, from a day-to-day -day point of view. It'd be nice to be able to open the trunk. That's the only thing uh, I would suggest for BYD. Otherwise, it's not too bad. Uh, the drive experience I have um, shown you uh, briefly in some of my videos, uh, including the first drive away uh, day where I was still learning about the controls. Um, the actual drive quality is actually pretty comfortable. Uh, it's not a sporty vehicle, not this trim anyway. Uh, admittedly, I've only had it on normal mode for the last week. Um, the suspension is very gentle, um, not bouncy at all. It's just gentle and supple. Feels a bit more like my Tesla Model S, to be honest with you. So it's more like a saloon type sedan rather than a sporty sedan, for example, like the Tesla Model 3. So it's a definitely a more comfortable ride. Not much tire noise and road noise coming through to the cabin, so they've done a good job with insulation. Uh, and very comfortable over bumps as well. It feels like a very solid big vehicle. It is a heavier vehicle than the Tesla Model 3. Um, it certainly feels that way too. Um, takes a bit more oomph to uh, navigate and to maneuver corners as well. So yeah, I don't mind. It's, uh, it's a different driving experience and I think it translates across to uh, ride comfort for passengers as well. I think my passengers have been pretty comfortable so far. Now, of course, the one thing that's let the car down, which is well documented on my channel and elsewhere, is the ADAS, which is the Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. It's a bit too intrusive at the moment and probably not calibrated well enough. Um, there are situations where I found it a bit dangerous, um, hence I've actually turned off Emergency Lane Keeping Assist. Um, now, luckily, I always have control of the car, always have two hands on the wheel, because there's been situations where the car has tried to correct my driving. It's just too sensitive and it's actually tried to get me off my lane into an oncoming vehicle. Nothing I couldn't have adjusted myself, but still, uh, someone who is not paying attention uh, could run into trouble. So I think for the time being, turn this off until BYD fix this. So if anyone from BYD is watching, you have to calibrate this properly. It's definitely a dangerous issue at the moment. Um, and traffic light recognition is great. It picks up the speed signs pretty well. In fact, it even picks up the electronic speed signs on the Sydney Harbour Bridge, which I've shown in my uh, staycation video. Uh, the only thing is the alerts are just too intrusive. Um, there's got to be an offset setting where it'll only beep after, say, X amount of kilometres an hour over the limit. Otherwise, being one or two over is just ridiculous. Like, you, no one's a robot. You know, as much as we try to obey the law, sometimes we do go over. Sometimes the speed sign is not picked up for that road and you're going at the speed limit anyway. So those things like that uh, can be a bit frustrating. So uh, I will make sure I turn off those alerts every time I drive too. I don't mind seeing the speed sign on the car dash helps me become safer because I'm seeing the current speed limit most of the time, it's accurate, but I don't want the alerts. Now in terms of um, cruise control, if you just use it on pure cruise control, it's fine, uh, but the lane keeping is problematic at the moment from the brief drives I've had. I'll try and do more driving on the freeway, but just on sort of major roads, I don't think it's reliable enough uh, as a lane keeping function. Uh, it doesn't center as well as say the Tesla Model Y over here. And it doesn't actually tell you when the lane keeping or intelligent part switches off. So the faint green steering wheel icon will just disappear all of a sudden without any warning. And that's where a warning would be useful because suddenly you're in just normal cruise control uh, and the car's not doing the auto steering for you. And that potentially is dangerous as well. So again, BYD, if you're watching, that needs to be fixed. Okay, so second last thing I want to touch on is parking. Um, it actually does a pretty good job with that. The sensors work very well, very accurate. I've tested that already in a previous video. Uh, the cameras are great too. Having a front bumper camera is fantastic. I know it's standard in most cars now, but our Tesla Model Y and even the new Tesla Model 3 doesn't have a front bumper camera. So that's great to have. The 360 camera is very useful and the side cameras are useful too when you're parking. That comes on automatically and you can see how close you are to the curb. Now the car didn't come with a dash cam. I've shown you a video how to install that. Uh, now there's two cameras at the front of the windscreen, dash cam, as well as the uh, intelligent camera for the lane keeping stuff. Um, and the dash cam works very well. Uh, it's a rolling recording. You can put in your own micro SD card and you can save the image, you can lock or uh, secure the video that you want to keep so it doesn't get overwritten. And um, yeah, it's pretty good as a dash cam. 
Uh, it doesn't have a rear dash cam recording, so if you need that function, and even myself, I might consider adding a third party one for the rear camera recording. There's no stationary sort of sentry mode like they have in the Tesla, so that's one drawback for sure. And that's very useful if you're in a public car park and you're worried about someone scratching your car or damaging your vehicle. So that's good evidence to use for your insurance company. And finally, on the topic of charging and range, so my BYD app says I've got 42% of charge remaining. So I've driven 267 kilometers so far, haven't charged the car once, uh, using up 58% of the battery. So I'm looking at a range of about 460 kilometers for my first uh, range test. Um, probably less efficient than I thought it would be, but obviously we'll see whether that improves over time. Uh, I do live in a very hilly area, so possibly all the drives up and down uh, the hills have affected the efficiency somewhat. So whether uh, that efficiency improves on a flat road, uh, we'll find out uh, on later drives. And uh, in future videos, I'll be showing you my home setup for charging. I've currently got a wall box wall connector and also a Tesla Gen 3 wall connector as well. So uh, I'll show you how I charge my vehicle. Um, and also we'll do a Tesla supercharging test at a V3 supercharger that enables non-Tesla vehicles to charge at, as well as a uh, just a standard uh, DC fast charger. Okay, so in summary, things I love about the BYD seal. Number one, the price. Number two, uh, the uh, design of the vehicle. Number three, the uh, quality uh, premium finish inside. Number four, the ride and driving quality. It's very comfortable to sit in and it's a very comfortable drive as well because of the gentle suspension. Things I'm concerned about, uh, the warranty, which has a lot of clauses and that's been well documented already. So we shall document and monitor that situation as I continue ownership of this vehicle. Not too fond of the uh, ADAS system at the moment. Again, hopefully that will be updated very shortly with over the air uh, software update. Um, very basic head up display. That could be improved for sure. At the moment, it's just showing the speed. Be nice to have the navigation on there as well. And finally, the intelligent cruise control uh, leaves a lot to be desired. The cruise control part is okay, but the lane keeping auto steer uh, is really not up to scratch at the moment. So that needs to be improved for sure. Okay, so compromises I've had to make with the Tesla Model Y. I'm sure you Tesla fans will want to hear this. Uh, so number one, the sentry mode, uh, for sure that would be missed if I'm parking in a public car park. Then again, maybe ignorance is bliss. Uh, and sentry mode certainly does chew up some of the battery as well. So, you know, overall it may not be as efficient having sentry mode versus not having sentry mode. Uh, number two, having to carry a car key again around with me. There's no way to load the uh, NFC card to the Apple wallet, for example. That'd be nice to have or at least have a phone as your key to uh, be able to access the car when you walk a bit closer to it, like in the Tesla. So those kind of small things uh, would be quite nice to have. And finally, obviously the software and the uh, autopilot from Tesla uh, is definitely more intuitive and more user-friendly. Uh, maybe that's because I've been using the, the Tesla ecosystem for the last you know, eight years now, uh, whereas I'm just still getting used to the BYD. So that's not quite a fair comment at the moment. I'm sure with time, I'll get used to the software. And of course, I'm looking forward to seeing how they improve things with time as well. Don't forget, uh, Tesla has had a lot of feedback from customers, including myself over the years. And you can see how the software has been implemented to uh, accommodate those changes with time. So yeah, BYD, hopefully you'll be uh, as in tune with customers as Tesla has been. I'm certainly happy and open to give feedback if you're willing to listen. All right, everyone, well, that's my quick rundown uh, after one week of ownership of the uh, BYD seal behind me. Obviously, I can't cover everything. I've just given you the major points and the major uh, issues that I've had with the car. And of course, an overall impression, which I am still loving. Uh, no regrets at all about buying this vehicle. It's an absolute joy to uh, drive this vehicle. If you turn off some of those intrusive ADAS settings to begin with, it's actually quite a nice, luxurious drive. And it's incredible value for this price. So that cannot be discounted at all. So uh, if you've got any other questions or comments or anything else you want me to do in future videos, leave them in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. I read all the comments. Uh, any genuine questions will be answered. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. Stay safe. And as always, happy charging.